Whoops. Good morning, gentlemen. This is, um, what is today? Today is Wednesday, March the 25th, and today we're going to be talking about concept 14.3. Inheritance patterns are often more complex uh, than would be predicted by uh, simple Mendelian genetics. Now, um, so in uh, this case, this section of chapter 14 is fairly long, and so I'm breaking it up into two videos. So please make sure that you uh, examine them both. Okay. Now, um, so the relationship between genotype and phenotype is very seldom as easy as Mendel's pea plants make it seem. There's uh, lots of uh, things that are heritable that are not determined only by one gene. All right, most things um, are inherit are uh, determined by multiple genes, um, or maybe even um, one gene with multiple alleles, more than two. Um, however, regardless of how many genes control for a uh, a trait and how many alleles a given gene might actually have. Uh, Mendel's laws of segregation and independent assortment still hold true, all right, even in very complex forms of inheritance. Whoops. Okay. So um, there's a couple of things that, that can change here, all right? Um, if you're looking at a single gene, the inheritance of characters may deviate from, from Mendel's laws, general simple uh, patterns, um, in a couple of different uh, situations. First, when the alleles are not completely dominant or recessive, okay, we call that uh, incomplete dominance or even uh, co-dominance. Uh, when a gene has more than two alleles, um, that can uh, make things a little bit complicated. And finally, when, when a gene can produce multiple phenotypes, in other words, um, lots and you know, more than two phenotypes. So, uh, so degrees of dominance, this is the first thing in that list right here, when alleles are not completely dominant or recessive. Um, Complete dominance occurs when the uh, the phenotypes of the heterozygote and the dominant homozygote are identical. So big P, big P, and big P, little p give you the same uh, phenotype. Okay, that's what we talked about in the last sec. Well, in, in fourteen point one with Mendel's pea plants. In incomplete dominance, the phenotypes of the F one hybrids is is somewhere in between the two. Uh, parental types. And so um, a purple flower and a, well, let's say a, a red flower and a white flower might give rise to an F1 generation that was pink, All right, Red and white make pink. Um, and in co-dominance, the, the uh, last kind here, two dominant alleles can affect the phenotype in separate distinguishable ways. And we'll talk about that uh, as well. So this is an example of what you might find for incomplete dominance. So now we're talking about the second thing on this row. Uh, here we've got um, two flowers, same species, uh, but the, their genes come in two different types. And uh, when they are combined, two different alleles, but both of these alleles are dominant. And so when you produce an F1 generation, you end up with a pink flower. The red flower uh, and the white flower give rise to a pink. But neither gene is, is gone. They're still there. <coughs> and so if you look at the uh, F2 generation produced by the F1 hybrids, you can you end up with a, uh, a red flower. Uh, two pink flowers and a white flower, or at least a one to two to one phenotypic ratio. I'm sorry, geno. Well, no, both phenotypic and genotypic ratio instead of the three to one that Mendel saw in his pea plants for genotypes. Okay, so there's a couple of different 
neat little things that you can look at uh, in terms of the relationship between dominance and phenotype. In the case of, of pea shape, remember we talked about the round and wrinkled peas? Uh, the dominant allele codes for an enzyme that converts an unbranched form of starch uh, in seed to a branched form of starch. And that keeps the pea plant um, wide. The recessive allele um, codes for a defective form of the enzyme, which leads to an accumulation of unbranched starch. This allows water to enter the seed, which then wrinkles when it dries up. And so that's why you see wrinkled peas. Right? So wrinkled peas are recessive. Fat round peas uh, have the dominant phenotype. Tay-Sachs disease is fatal. A dis it's a dis uh, dysfunctional enzyme causes an accumulation of fats in the brain. Um, and, and this one is fascinating because the alleles work differently at different levels of biology. At the organismal or the, the whole being level, the allele is simply recessive. But at the biochemical level, the phenotype, in other words, the level of enzyme activity, is incompletely dominant. And finally, at the molecular level, the alleles are co-dominant. And so this is a neat uh, example of what you might, uh, of, of things to come. Now, one thing that many students are unaware of is that dominant alleles are not always the most um, uh, frequent in populations. All right. They're not more common than recessive alleles necessarily. And a great example of this is that one baby out of 400 in the United States is born with six fingers or six toes or both. Um, and this condition is known as polydactyly. All right. We have generally five fingers on our hands. Um, that's called pentadactyly. But polydactyly is typically when there are six fingers and toes on each hand and foot. And this, believe it or not, is the dominant condition. So if you've got six fingers or toes, your kids are gonna have six fingers and toes. So your, your spouse needs to uh, be aware of that. Okay, I'm gonna end it here just because uh, this is a long section. And so we'll, um, we'll lead on from uh, this point tomorrow, or today actually. You should watch the second video today.